okay. Okay, once everybody has everything and you have your map open, you are here. <laughs> you are here. And this is a Clayhead Trail. Runs down here and we're going to go onto the beach right there. And we're going to go to that outcrop. We're going to walk along the beach and moraines of southern New England. And all those things that you see in black are in moraines. Here, Les Serkin named these two pieces of moraine that were here, uh, the Beacon Hill and the Corn Neck Moraine. And so we would be sitting on the Corn Neck Moraine. Block Island is right in between two ice lobes, right in between two ice lobes. And so ice came from here, this lobe, and this lobe, which is the Narragansett Bay, Buzzard Bay lobe, the rocks are very different. These rocks are uh, uh, metamorphosed sandstones and shales, and so they're schisty, slaty, uh, uh, metamorphosed conglomerates. These rocks are by and large granites and granite gneisses, the pebbles that you see in them. So when it went over this, this, these outcrops here, it picked up that material and deposited it. What we're going to be looking at is actually down here on the bottom slabs of material that were thrust by the ice. And so what's happening here, this is what here in Black Island is what we call tectonic end moraines. And so here's some ice and the ice melts back here and out in front of the ice material is deposited. And then the ice starts to re-advance again and plow through the material that's already been deposited and it makes thrust blocks. And these are thrust blocks here. And that's what's down there. That's what's down there in the cliff. And the ice eventually advances. And then it may indeed actually override the thrust material. And that is what happened here. I'm going to look at these guys, pots and kettles. There's some there. And look at this where it says Cretaceous clay. And it turns out the Cretaceous clay is quite sandy there. Uh, around the corner, from a pl we, where we will not go, you can see this white is Cretaceous here, and there's a thrust fault from one of those tectonic, uh, te tectonic thrusts in the end moraine. And so then you can see the later stratified sediment over the top. So that's what to look for down there. Most of these cobbles on the beach um, came from where? They came from Rhode Island, and then once they got here, the question is, where were they deposited? They were deposited somewhere here, and then they were eroded and became part of the near shore area, and then you're standing on the berm of a gravel beach. So this material has made a trip. It uh, made a trip in the ice, it got deposited in the bluffs, the bluffs eroded, got into the shallow shore face there, and then came back to the beach. And it's deposited right here, right now. If they're all, not all, some aren't, pink granite and granite gneiss, what does that mean this is the source of the rocks, the source? back there. Which globe? The Rhode Island. The left one. The, the left one. <laughs> the, <laughs> the west one. Well that's interesting because that map showed that it ought to be a preponderance of ones that were from the Narragansett Basin. It should be the one that was to the east. So that's something to that's something to think about. What we're looking at here is the remains of a piece of clayhead swamp. And so this was before there was vegetation in there. It's really a kettle hole, it was a kettle hole, which is basically a small pond. And this stratified material, which is quite silty, 
with a little bit of sand in it. It's sandier up here, but this is quite silty. That was deposited in the bottom of the kettle hole just as the ice was leaving. Hey, this is glacial material and about the latest glacial material that you would see. It's part of the drape over the surface. Look north, you see slumped in the vegetation, but then you'll see darker areas that appear to be tilted. And they are indeed tilted. Those are the tilted blocks, but at the top of the bluff, the upper 25% of the bluff, it's all flat lying. That's the overriding material that overrid the, the, the tectonic crust, crust blocks. And this would be the last rendition of it right here. No, no. First of all, off to your left, it's a little darker and grayer. And you can see the beds that are they're dipping at about 45 degrees, give or take a few, give or take 10 degrees. That's, that's the up-tilted sediment that's in one of the blocks. If you can see that, I think that passes under this material right here. And so here's another piece of material right here that's it's bowed up, but it's more horizontal. Up above there, there's a, a gravel, that cemented gravel, and then there's more gravel that's horizontal, and it's the cap on this other stuff that's down here. And so you can trace it along, you can trace that cap along, and then above that is that dark, sort of looks wet material with a gigantic boulder in it. And I want to say that that is uh, till, but I'm not certain because I can't climb up there and look at it. A puddle of material, a, a silt-sized material that was uh, filled up a little ice block and that big boulder slid off the ice into that puddle. So there's two possibilities. And the more I think about it, I like that one better. <laughs> so we'll go down and around the corner and we'll come to the Cretaceous white deposits. And usually I have a whole bunch of scale. Now the story might be here is that this is what people call pots and kettles and there's like a frying pan right there. <laughs> um, and they range, some of it is Cretaceous material and some of it is Pleistocene material. And I think that this is Cretaceous material because these cobbles, these, that's a boulder, is highly weathered, has a weathering rind around it, and that this black stuff is the is the weathering rind, and it seems to be internally quite weathered, and so they all have that weathering rind, and that would not have formed uh, in the groundwater since in the last uh, 20,000 years. So what I was going to do is hit one of these guys to see who's in there. Look out, eyeballs. Yeah, I think these. Uh, I think this one is Cretaceous. Not that. That's just got wedged in there. I don't think that belongs there. And here's the weathering rind. Was that deposited over it, or did that? Weather it's weathered it? around it. Weather, yeah. Yeah. Weathered in the outcrop. Yeah. East or from the west slope? What? Is it from the <laughs> east or from the west? Must be from. The you don't know. East. If oh, it's no. Cretaceous, you don't know. You don't know. That's what I. <laughs> yeah. It's, it could be from right down there. <laughs> How old is this Raritan formation? Somewhat older than 65 million. Whereas the oldest, that material up there is 20,000. Yep. Okay, let's uh, walk around the corner. This is Cretaceous, and the white, again, is from uh, 
clay weathering, but you see there's a lot of pebbles there. And if you looked at those, I bet they'd be 100% quartz. Yep, all right, good. Now, what's happened here is, um, and I'll pass this one around, and it's all full of quartz pebbles, but if you grind it up, and after people look at it, we can break it up in little pieces, and you get down to the constituent parts, and you're left with, in your hand, a bunch of quartz pebbles, a bunch of quartz sand, and the rest is clay. You're holding quartz pebbles and, and quartz sand and clay in this. This is Cretaceous. This is rare tan. And I can't remember what the rare tan is. You can look that up but it's older than 65, but it is Cretaceous. The clay person. <laughs>